FedEx Ground is hiring individuals to load and unload packages for shifts of approximately two to four hours in our fast-paced environment. Package handlers are responsible for the physical loading and unloading and or sorting of packages of varying sizes and weights by hand, including lifting, pushing, pulling, carrying, scanning, placing packages, as well as physical bending, twisting, kneeling, and etc. In a safe and efficient manner, shifts may vary depending on package volume and business needs. Package handlers will receive a competitive hourly rate and are eligible for an attractive benefits package including medical, dental, vision, vacation, holiday pay, parental leave, and tuition assistance at the completion of an eligibility period. Flexible schedules are offered at many of our locations and will be discussed during the hiring process. Individuals who are interested in starting their journey with FedEx Ground must be at least 18 years of age and will be required to watch a virtual job period before moving forward with the employment application process. Reasonable accommodations are available for qualified individuals with disabilities throughout the application process. Now, this is for the title of Package Handler Warehouse. Uh, now, what to expect? Uh, well, first thing to start off with the interview. Um, the interview itself, uh, when I first went in to uh, get my first interview, um, I, was, I did it online. I did it through uh, through email. That's when I got I got it from actually Indeed. I didn't even go onto the site. I got it from the job Indeed, but that's neither here nor there. When I went to the place for my first interview, um, it took a few days for that to even get set up. Um, I had did my application actually like around August, so we were going into peak season actually. So yeah, um, basically on the first day you're gonna be there and dressed up or whatever you don't even really necessarily have to dress in business like casual or anything like that you could legit probably go in like a hoodie or something like that they it's not really like a a, a professional interview but it is at the same time it's more or less just kind of letting you know what's happening here it's not really a it's not really an interview where you can't get the job it's one of those where like you're almost guaranteed to get the job it just takes time for them to call you back because they have a lot of people who are constantly like going in and out of there um, I'll touch more on that later, but basically, yeah, you'll be in there with like a few other people, more likely sitting in a computer room while you're waiting for like the human resources, uh, woman or man, to uh, call you back there, depending upon what time you showed up. And basically, when you're back there, uh, when you're back there with the human resource person, they will uh, basically tell you about the job. They will tell you about what to expect with the job. You more than likely won't fail the interview it's not really an interview for you to like get denied from unless you just basically blatantly say no i don't want to do this you know, so like they'll just ask you if, they'll ask you a few questions or whatever they'll get some information down from you and then they'll call you back for the first day of training now it's your second day coming in uh you'll come in through the same the same doors uh there'll be the metal detectors the metal detector thing um you want to kind of keep all of your like stuff that could potentially set it off basically in your car or in your locker because then you're just going to be holding up people behind you because everyone has to get in through that same door. Um, also, another thing I want to point out too, uh, if you're going to go in the winter, um, more than likely you want to wear composite boots. Composite boots would be the best footwear, I can definitely assure you. So you don't want to wear, um, what, what are they called? Steel toe boots because those will set off the alarms. And I mean, those are set up the uh, metal detectors, and it's a bit inconvenient to constantly keep having to take off your shoes when you're thinking about winter, um, because you know if you're taking off your shoes and everyone's stepping around in there, that means that the floor is going to be wet, and that means your feet are going to get wet. So you know, um, it's it's just it's a way to avoid a minor inconvenience. That's all. Uh, but anyways, moving on to the second day, which is the first day of training. Now, with the first day of training, what to expect is. You're going to go in there, it's going to be you and a few other people. Some people may not be in there, like, yeah, well, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyways, uh, it'll be you and a few the people that also went in with the interview who decided to come back and the supervisor or manager or whatever. And they'll basically let you know, I mean, they'll basically be telling you about the job as well, but they'll also have you see a video. And that video is about... 20 or 30 some minutes long depending um and they'll be like commentating over it. they'll be stopping it on occasion sometimes it's actually a, no it's not actually just a video it's actually like a a presentation thing it's like a a slideshow kind of thing where it's like pictures is like you know they got like notes on it and then he'll be he or she will be reading it off um whereas and it's like with the second shift is from like 5 p.m to 12 a.m 
third shift is like 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, and basically how to look at second shift and how to look at third shift. Second shift is kind of like Tetris. If you if you ever played the game, if you ever play a game that's like Tetris, or you ever just played Tetris, that's basically how you should look at it when you're like loading loading stuff up. Third, uh, the third shift is like is which is where you're going to be unloading trucks. That is like Jenga, where you're going to be like you know starting usually. Well, I mean, except except for the part apart from the fact that you're not you're not like taking boxes off from like the middle and like you know, no like. You want to prevent it from falling, and it's the like it's like the relation with that. You want to just prevent the tower from falling. You want to avoid the walls from falling on you. But again, I'll touch on that later. Um, but yeah, third, it's, it's like that. So when you're uh, in the um, second, when you're in the uh, first day of training, they're gonna just tell you about that. It's legit, just a slideshow kind of thing where you're just getting information like. Uh, information in there so like sh stuff doesn't really start to happen until like the second day now on the second day and again that's potentially things could happen on the second day and the second day is more the same but now there's a potential chance depending upon how busy that uh that warehouse is that day they may actually have you help out um which is part of the plan that they're supposed to do anyways but it's it's it varies they might actually definitely will, you will definitely do that on the third day on the third day you will definitely do that i think actually your third day is technically your first day but it's not um it's so that way people can again get a feel for the job and whether or not do you want to continue to do this because i'm gonna be honest i came in there with about 10 people and um and again this is for the second shift came in there with 10 people and by my first day only three people were still left including myself so that means that's me and two other people stayed so yeah uh so that should let you know that the job is low-key no joke um but i digress um yeah on the third day you will be basically more than likely in a truck or whatever um depending upon which shift you started out in uh they'll have you just like what they had me do to like start out is i went we went on the van lines and there was like nobody there and we were basically just like unloading these like trucks and putting them on the assembly the assembly uh, belt which legit had nothing to do with what we were actually going to be doing in the second shift the second shift is about loading in other words you're going to be scanning boxes scanning the barcodes and then you know loading them into the trucks we were taking them outside of the trucks my first day, I, I did what third shift does, but I was, and listen, like, it didn't at all prep me for that. So, basically, whatever they have you do, just know that. I don't know if this is the case for every warehouse for FedEx Ground, but keep in mind that whatever they have you do might not be in relation to what they actually might have you do. Like, if anything, it's not even necessarily a test. It's just for you to just to get a feel for what you might be doing. They don't really know where they're going to put you yet until, like, your first day. Like... It, I know it sounds unprofessional, and it kind of is, so you kind of have to just roll with it. Um, but, like, yeah, that's pretty much what to expect on your third day. The most likely, that's when you'll actually start doing stuff. So then now, depending upon which shift, I don't, you can't ask me about first shift because I don't know anything about it at all. I mean, I think you honestly, I don't even think that's even package handle work at that point. But, uh. Yeah, then you got, uh, so let's go on to, like, your first day. Now, on your first day of, I'm just going to start off with second shift. On your first day, they're going to tell you about the, uh, what are they called? The scanners. They're going to tell you about the scanners. They're going to tell you about safety, safety above all else. Um, everyone usually meets in a uh, set location to talk with the man, as the manager gets, like, his, uh, his briefing of today. They usually give you the volume. Usually, they give you the volume. But you know that might not happen. Since sometimes it varies. Sometimes they can't even get the volume out to you um, because they don't know. Because sometimes it changes. Since sometimes they can be wrong. It's not on some kind of automated system. Well, I mean, it is, but it's not. Um, so yeah, kind of take everything that you almost take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. I mean, you just don't take everything at face value. I guess is what I'm trying to say there. But yeah, they'll teach you about the scanners. Um, 
so I'm trying to think as I'm doing this. This was like a, a couple months ago. But yeah, they, they teach you about the scanners. They teach you about inputting the uh, scanner codes, which might take a bit of time for you to remember how to do it on your own. But it's 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 a very simple process. Um, I don't remember all of it, but it's basically just inputting some numbers. Make sure you make sure you're um, you're in the right category on the uh, on the scanner as well. It's just all inputting that. That way you can set up set it up and then go to a shoot and then scan that barcode that way you're in a specific truck because all the trucks are numbered from like 1 to like 20 or not 1 to like 30 1 to 20 or like actually no 1 to 29 because they actually they're set up in different load bays you have low bay 1, low bay 2, low bay 3 low bay 1 is actually for unloading low bay, load bay 2 and 3 I think are for uh, loading so yeah, uh, you always wanna they'll, they'll they'll let you know all that once you go in. Um, they they are pretty uh helpful with that, and you can always ask anybody questions. I never came across somebody who just like they were just like rude. I mean, now people may be having a bad day. I heard some pretty bad things about the van line. I never went there. Um, yeah, I heard that they 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 weren't the nicest of people over there. I mean, like just like a, a little small like quick story, I guess. Um. I mean, I, I heard that, you know, at one point, you know, like, somebody was loading a van, like, one of those van FedEx trucks. They were loading it wrong, and, like, the driver came out and took all those boxes that that person loaded in there, threw them out and on the floor, and that person had to load it again because they didn't load it the way that the driver wanted it uh, in the back of the truck. So if you're put on the van lines, just know that just know that you need to do things in a certain way, <laughs> I mean, you need to do things a certain way everywhere you are in the in the uh, in the warehouse. But probably the most there, because that way you don't get annoyed and then throw a fit. Because you do, they definitely don't want you to throw a fit. Because if you any insults or anything like that, they have a zero tolerance for any of that. Like insulting somebody, nothing, put downs, any of that, zero tolerance. Any of it that's meant in a very derogatory meaning, any kind of way. That can like you know some basically affect somebody's mood and piss somebody off or whatever you could potentially get fired for it so keep it to keep it on the low or keep it to a minimum you don't want to do it you know, like don't don't even do it to yourself if you're trying to keep that job um but yeah basically uh with second shift you're gonna be just like loading in the underbelly load the underbelly and the uh, top portions now. you always start with the underbellies because all the and so we're talking about like the bigger trucks I'm talking about the trucks not the vans huge like trailers and stuff like that you're gonna be loading these up starting from the underbelly the underbelly is underneath these big ass like oh they're not that big but they're like these these like square things that you lift up and like they hold onto the wall or whatever they're the ones that like, make sure that the bottom portion of it um stays down that while the truck is driving um i forgot the technical term for them, what they call them but uh, yeah basically you load up the underbelly first and then you load up the back and then you uh load the back of the underbelly as well and then you close these lids and then you start to lift and then that's when you start to uh, load up the top portion of the truck which is what you would normally see if you were looking to a, of a full truck you would normally see the top part no one ever pays attention to the underbelly um, and that pretty much sums up that uh, the second shift um, the second shift actually has uh, oh and like ICs um, they definitely want you to get ICs out as quickly as possible um, as far as like, oh, what up? appreciate it. As far as timing is concerned, you definitely want to. Um, as far as timing is concerned, you definitely want to. Uh, you want to move fast, but like with the second shift, I never really got rushed. You know and I mean, they're they're pretty patient there. Unlike the third shift, where you would you have to move like three seconds per box. It's very key that you move three seconds per box because they want you out of there at a specific time. Whereas with second shift, they it's not you're not set to get out of there at a certain time. There's I think there's way too many trucks and there's like way too many like yeah this, this is just no you're just not gonna get out of there at a certain time. It's basically like even if it's from like five to twelve, you, there's a chance that you could be there from like five to like one o'clock. So it's expect that as well. There's not set times. It's not like Pizza Hut. It's not like a it's not like a, a restaurant or anything like that where you clock in and clock out. Listen, you clock out when they tell you to. So, and if you walk out, they'll consider, that, yeah, they'll consider you a walk out, and you won't, and you will not be allowed to come back in. If you do come back in, more than likely, um, what the manager told me, 
he'll do is he'll look at you he'll smile and then he will happily walk you outside of the building and that is that'll be the end of that so he will escort you out of the building at that point um with nothing no no harsh words said or anything like that you know, so they're pretty professional about that even even though that's low-key disrespectful but whatever <laughs> um but yeah um i see they definitely want those on the they want them on there as fast as possible you want to load up from like the sides like they'll, they'll tell you about the walls they want you to load up from like the sides and stuff like that you want to use bigger you know, some bigger boxes to cover a lot of space you always want to fill up and you want to make sure that things are squared and even Again, these are things that you're going to learn on the first day. I mean, on the uh, first day of training. So, I'm just letting you know that just as for like what to expect. Uh, um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, depending upon, and this is this is this is like this might be like a rare thing, but I just figure I might as well mention it. If I mean, depending upon how like you know, saying the other people um. Like the, the other people who are on the same shift as you are working and like their moods and stuff like that and how often they call off and how many people are quitting, you may end up getting a random pay raise because that's what I had got. It's like and it's only like a dollar. It's like a dollar more, but it's you know people were valuing that dollar, so I, I guess it's something to value. Um, you may get a random pay raise. They'll let you know this when it happens because when I was there in that second shift, there's a lot of people who were leaving the second shift. Um, to either go to the third shift actually or they were just quitting the job altogether again like the job is not for everybody this is a difficult job it's not for everybody at all and um, yeah uh, yeah and like yeah that's pretty much the, like the longest short of like second shift so basically now we move on to third shift third shift is unloading mainly just unloading so now with that one you again have a meeting when every day you start there um now at the pain point if you shift from second shift to third shift that means you now have experience with loading trucks going into unloading trucks so now um just to just to throw this out and get this out of the way they may sometimes ask you to still load some trucks so never just be like okay so since i'm not in second shift anymore i don't have to worry about loading trucks no you potentially can still load trucks if they need help with it. You know, so they'll call down and then you know, so they'll tell the man, they'll ask the managers, "Hey, we need some assistance." You know, such and such called off, and you know, saying so like, "I need somebody to help me with this truck or whatever, or you know, or whatever the case may be." And you'll just be there, and like, it's not even like it won't be as hard, or it won't be as like much. You know, so that's the only thing about unloading, like in the third shift, because that's not your main priority. I never had to do too much whenever I was loading um, during third shift. It was never nowhere near as much. Because, like, with second shift, there's tons of boxes that come in. Like, we're talking about tons. And you're, like, handling a truck by yourself, too. I, I, you know what? Let's take, let's take another step back. Let's take another step back. I forgot about that. When you're in there, you're in there by yourself. Majority of the time, you're in there by yourself. Um, and you're dealing with an entire truck. And you're dealing with tons of boxes coming down the chute. Well, I guess that's where you have to be fast at. You really you do have to be fast there so it's not necessarily people rushing you but they might just to tell you to hurry up because you're like slowing down the chute and that causes issue, that causes issues upstairs um and to where bosses now have to be shipped off somewhere else they, like into like other people's shoes and then that's that causes a it causes a bit of a a malfunction to sort of say i, I know it sounds intimidating but basically you kind of want to just keep it moving on the rollers which is the middle portion of it you'll see it when you when you start um you basically want to just keep it all of that just moving you, know, so you want to keep all the boxes moving if it starts to come up to a point where it's starting to stick up there on the chute then you, know, so you might have to get up out of the underbelly and then move it yourself manually you know what I'm and then if it's like if it you can't move it at all then what you might have to do is you might have to just either a call for help b um stop the shoot like or not necessarily stop the shoot but like you know stop the boxes from coming in so that we can handle the box inside um and then unload and then unload it from the shoot which is what majority of people will do you'll see that unless you have like a senior person in there um who like really knows what they're doing um they can do it i mean they're not like extremely fast but they, would, they can do it effectively without having a uh, thing like affect the you know the upstairs 
but yeah, that's that's something important to know that I cannot believe I forgot that. Um, uh, I think that's about it as far as loading. Um, other than like ICs, ICs is just is pretty self-explanatory once you get in there. You know, they definitely want you to load those first. So yeah, they they will they will preach about that. They will preach about those ICs, those heavy heavy boxes. And also another thing about ICs, don't if you can't lift it by yourself, don't don't lift it by yourself. Call for help. Ask for help. Go to the next truck over and ask for help. Just you you have to ask, otherwise you could hurt yourself. So yeah, but moving on to the third shift. Like I said. You start every morning with a meeting. Um, everyone collectively stands at a at the place. Uh, it stands at a place, and they, the manager talks for a little bit. He tells you the volume. He tells you the uh, the safety safety um, word of the day. Not like like you know like basically like I don't know when you know, so talking about th- just for example three points of contact when you're entering a truck, which is. Uh, three points. I think it was three points or was it two points? I think it was three. Well, basically it was whenever you enter a truck, you always want to kind of have your hand on the side of it or on the wall coming up and then probably like one on the ground. So you never want to be standing on the rollers. The rollers will, you, <laughs> that is a guaranteed snap city. You don't want to do that at all, obviously. you'll Again, you'll learn that through like some things I, I can tell you, but there's some things that you can only, ex- you only will know for yourself when you're in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, third shift, uh, after the safety meeting, I mean, after the safety meeting, they basically assign you, um, they tell you to look at the, uh, the sheets where you're going to be assigned at, you're going to be assigned to a specific door, sometimes you might get paired with somebody, sometimes you won't be paired with somebody, if you're unloading, you might, depending upon your build, again, they're going to do what's best for the company. So they're going to be like, if you have a build that seems like you're strong, you're going to be the one unloading boxes. And then you'll have a scanner, someone else who's just scanning boxes. Or if you're someone who's kind of more frail or like sometimes, majority of the time, it's females. Now, I'm not saying that females, females do unload too. They do be the ones who are unloading boxes as well. I've seen a few of them. All right. Sometimes it's a a dual female com- uh, combo going on where like the fe- there's a female unloading boxes and there's a female scanning as well. Listen, like it's they're they're not uh they don't discriminate on that. Uh. Yeah, you just wanna uh you wanna look at that list and then find out where you are and then after that um get to know get to know that person that you're with. Um, you don't have to. It, it can be every type of job, and they are really big on communication there. So it's depending on whoever you work with, also might be pretty big on communication. Um, because you have to, you have to tell them like you don't want to send up heavy boxes. That's the thing about unloading versus loading. Loading boxes are coming down to you, so you don't have to worry about that. Plus, on top of that, majority of the time you're working by yourself because you own the scanner and you're the one loading the trucks. Sometimes you'll get help with that, but majority of the time you're by yourself. Um, and like I said, with unloading, you can get help, but majority of the time, especially like around like this time, whenever this video comes out, which it'll come out recently, um, it'll come out soon. It won't take, it's like it, they will, you will definitely more than likely be working by yourself. Now during peak, when like the volume increases, depending upon how, that would depend on how many people you have in the warehouse, how many employees are working unloading. If you don't have that many, more than likely you'll probably still be working by yourself. Um. So yeah, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, typically, towards the ending of nights, you people start to come in and help you. Um, some people do. Some people just leave. And people leave at random times, either because they can't do the work or you know whatever the case may be. Uh, let me see what else. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I guess when you're when you're working the unloading. Um, and you're doing the boxes. I typically was, I always started with um, either like my best side. Like I'm right-handed, and like you just want to kind of figure out your posture for when you're doing this as well, because you want to bend your knees and you won't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to be like shifting your like your uh your body too much when you're doing this. Like you want to kind of stay stabilized. You know, as you're like reaching up, getting a box, putting it down. Reaching up, getting a box, putting it down. You don't want to be like like moving a little too much you always want to pivot pretty much you always want to just pivot your body as you're doing it because if, if you don't pivot then you're going to hurt yourself um again something else that they'll teach you they should teach you 
they should keep that's the emphasis on should because I, I know that some places they don't do the same thing as others so because like even even the place that i went to was fine but then i was also told of another place that actually did things a lot better and i noticed listen, there were flaws in there were flaws in what i was like doing and seeing and stuff like that as well because of some techniques and things that, that they didn't do at the warehouse that i was at but like there was another warehouse that was like legit probably like an hour 30 minutes away that did things a little bit better but i wasn't trying to transfer just because it was like it's like another 30 minutes away which would equate to an hour the one i was already going to was already 30 minutes away i don't want to drive an hour to the, another one just because they do shit better but i digress um what else for the scanning oh yeah but, uh i touched on communication very lightly but like Communicating with your teammate is very important because you don't want to send heavy objects upstairs. You don't want to send skinny objects upstairs. You don't want to you don't want to send too tall objects upstairs. You don't want to send objects that are too I don't think too small. I think flat. You don't want to send flat objects upstairs. Again, you'll see this on you'll see like a little sign on the on the side of the wall that should tell you about you know what are considered things that should stay at the stay downstairs versus what should go upstairs. And that that's usually on every single truck, so you shouldn't. You should definitely notice it when you're in there. And again, if you don't know anything, always ask. Always ask for help, because that is like crucial at that job. Is asking for help. If you can't do something, let the manager know, or let somebody know. All right, because it's not worth hurting yourself over. Like I said, safety is a big, a big, big thing at FedEx Ground. Um, so. Yeah, that pretty much covers that up as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, there's not too much else to explain about the job. The job is pretty straightforward. Um, again, it all comes down to like whether or not you want to do it or not. It's the experience. Um, now, what I say is a good job. It's an all right job. Um, it can go up to thirteen, thirteen dollars, thirteen something. To like start out and then like you can go you can potentially go to like fifteen dollars per hour um but i would tell you this right now you're only working two to four hours so don't get too excited about that because you can't really take advantage of like that paycheck you're working legit two to like four hours so like usually it'll be four i doubt it's usually never just two hours you it'll always usually be four i was and like you might get overtime now this also depends on whether or not how much are you willing to learn are you willing to learn the other stations because one i didn't do everything i legit just did unloading and then i did loading that was it whereas you had van lines you had there was like another area that was up towards the van line area where they pulled off the ic's from the belt and put it onto like this other thing that they drove away to put into like the van line trucks i think and uh yeah so there's like there was that area i did that area like one time one time me myself i was like eh, i'd rather just unload i'd rather just unload because it was something i was comfortable with and this is what i wanted to do but like personally if you want more money you kind of want to be invested into like spending more time on the job with other positions um but yeah because that way you can maximize how long you're going to be there typically they want you Typically, they want you out of there as far as third shift. They want you out of there by 7:30. If you start at three, they want you out by 7:30. If you start at two, they want you out by like 7:30. Um, 7:30 is usually the time when they want you out of there. Now, anything later than that is considered overtime. Um, and if you need questions about that, they can explain that shit to you. Um, I'm I'm not I'm no longer an employee there. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but all in all, I give the experience out of 10 uh i give it a 6 out of 10 warehouse isn't exactly my cup of tea um i didn't really want to do a warehouse job to begin with but i needed i needed some money or whatever oh also it's weekly pay it's definitely weekly pay so if you need quick money uh if you need money every week it's definitely a job that you should do and like again like i said the job is pretty convenient with timing and like they're pretty flexible um you call off using a number actually uh you can request days off uh but again you have to use like a terminal thing to do that with which they'll give that to you because they also give you like a practice pass and then they give you a uh, an actual like uh like an actual like tag for you to like clock in and out with um that practice pass becomes 
ineligible in other words like you will not be able to use it so don't lose or like don't forget your main pass because once they give you that main pass that's that's um that pass that you got that trainee pass that you got at the beginning will become useless obsolete so just don't lose that but all in all yeah it was, it was about a six out of ten for me uh it became like i had problems with like my back actually when i was doing that job and I was having a hard time doing trucks by myself. So um, they later had moved me to doing ICs. Um, actually, in like the second half, like of the peak season. And actually, that was actually a lot better because it was with ICs. You're dealing with all heavy boxes, heavy boxes, just all heavy boxes. So you're not the type, the kind of time crunch that you're on is not as like small as someone else who's doing. Someone else who's doing like just the regular trucks, because the regular trucks, they're doing ICs and was like smaller boxes, but they're doing mainly smaller boxes. You know, so they're not. And every now and again, they'll get like a heavy box, which is the reason why they need to communicate. And the and on top of that too, if you're doing the IC trucks, usually you're in there with somebody else. You're in there. It's usually a two. That's a two-person truck because it's all heavy boxes, and sometimes those boxes are just at impossible angles. And like that is another thing about the job. I cannot stress this enough. Impossible angles. Impossible angles, you have to work around them. <laughs> you have to work around them, but sometimes you just have to ask for help because that's just what, how they're positioned in there. That's just how they're positioned in there. Like you just need help sometimes to just get them out of there. I can't tell you how many times I've like, I've had to like ask for help, like just to lift a box that's like wedged in somewhere that's weirdly wedged in there or like, like, the where you where you stand at versus where because like once you get into the underbelly when you're unloading like you're lifting up because like once you're done unloading uh, unloading the top part now you have to like start and you have to unload the underbelly now so now you're lifting up those lids and stuff like that and you're going all the way either to the back or you're starting at the front i think typically they'll tell you to start at the back um so yeah you'll probably be doing that and once you start at the back you are basically lifting the boxes up and to the rollers so now and but like the thing is you have you have to like bend down even more so than you were when you were like lifting at the top so it's it, it can get it can get a bit hectic and a bit strenuous um you just want to basically take your time but not too much time again you want to keep a three seconds three seconds per box uh mindset and like uh feel for the um, truck but um definitely um and if there's a box that's wedged in weirdly and you just cannot get it out no matter what skip it you just have to skip it and go and just find somewhere else sometimes you have to loosen some boxes up and like like that's the only way to get through it i mean sometimes i remember i was in a one of these really old trucks to where like you have to like once you get to the back it's not just like the back truck it's not just like the top part and then you're going into the underbelly it's the top part of it is like half the truck like like I want to say about 75% of the truck, then like the top part, like the, um, excuse me, the ending of the top part, like 20, like the last 25% of it is like you're in the underbelly now, like you're in the underbelly now before you even like lift open one of the top parts. And that means now you have to lift up into the rollers already and you're already standing above and then now you have to lift up, you have to move boxes out of your way to get down to basically lift, to basically try to take boxes that are like three three or four three or four like heights higher than you which means you, that you typically have to use a stand unless you're like someone of my height or stature where i'm able to just kind of reach up there and grab it and then put it down um and even then sometimes some buses are just up there so but like again what i was doing that was dangerous that was dangerous because if i had moved if i wasn't paying attention i could have moved the box the wrong way and then if i hadn't seen a box a bus could have landed on me and like hit me which I did get hit. You are going to almost guarantee get hit with a box. <laughs> you are almost guaranteed. If you work as a package handler, you are almost guaranteed to get hit with a box. Whether you are loading or unloading. Uh, I only received one actual injury from getting hit with a box where it cut up my back. Um, it was an IC that, it was a wooden IC that I um, didn't notice. Um, and like I said, ICs can range from like all types of different things. They can be like like steel rods it can be like these like really heavy really heavy metal sheaths uh like like straight up like things that could give you splinters like just like this big ass wooden plank 
could just be it. You know what I mean? Like these, like we're like ICs are anything. It could be anything. It could be listen. Like you got tons of tires that are in there, uh, rims that are in there. Like and these, like these are heavy objects. Some of them are not heavy. Some of them look heavy, but they're really not. It's it varies. Again, look at the barcodes, and you'll know. Sometimes like, like you'll just get a feel for it when you're in there. But uh, yeah, I think that's about it as far as FedEx Ground is concerned. It's yeah, I think I think that's about it. Um, up to fifteen dollars an hour. I, fifteen thirty was is what I was last making. Um, and that was like again, I was that was around peak season, which is where they give you that extra dollar, and then it goes away. It goes away actually uh, when January hits. So when you get those extra dollars, value them. <laughs> that's all I can really say about that. Just value them. But uh, yeah. Um, that's all in all. That's all I really have for you guys. Um. If I miss anything when you, when you go into there, please message uh, if anything comment on this video saying that I oh I didn't say this about the video. Why didn't you tell me about this? And I will if I remember it, it I will I will like contact you back and I'll be like oh my bad yeah this happens. So but yeah that was all I had for you guys. So appreciate it and thank you for watching.